serious company to other countries, I feel that cyber bullying is actually one of the most common issues in Hong Kong. Do, do, do we have other experiences you'd like to share or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm Larry Paget with the next day for you. One of the points I want to comment to me about the older children because
udah nih ya udah bisa ini yang proyek kita So that's why I think 
if they learn this, it's not so much about keeping up with the technology, it's more about learning how important the internet is for the younger generation, and then they are better prepared to include it in, in their work, and then they are not running after the children, but they can go a little bit ahead. They might. Thank you. Uh, I just have uh, something that I kept to you. When I think we are uh, challenging and actually with the question, is the, um, is the national strategy or regional strategy on child life protection different pillars? And we will uh, discuss about the different pillars that can compose the, uh, the financial strategy turning to the, I know the ITU works and as well. Can this be a solution for your point of view? Can you repeat the Can the, if we if we develop a kind of strategy at national or regional level of channel and protection, uh, taking uh, and answering uh, to different questions, different aspects, uh, so maybe this strategy will have a number of pillars. Can this be a solution to be on, on, on how to be up to date? Um, yeah, it, I guess, it, it, of course, it's a, it, it's a good approach, um, but at the end, we need to focus on educating the children as much as, and work on peer-to-peer -peer education as well. Um, at the end, you know, if we have strong youth, uh, which is not disadvantaged, and if they connect with the disadvantaged youth, that's where, the, where we can, you know, where we can get uh, results, basically, which will be in front of the problem instead of after the problem. So that is, I mean, that's just something I want to stress in this, in this situation. And obviously there's many solutions, but when we look at professionals in, the, in this area, usually they're too late, and I, I agree with you actually about technical uh, aspects. But then again, uh, we have this advantage you for many, many years, and the values uh, when it comes to online or offline are not that different. So we've been into this situation for many, many, many years. Uh, now, there is a technical aspect on top of that, and that is something we need to address. And in my personal experience, working with, again, disadvantaged Jews all over the world, from the U.S. to Balkan countries, uh, the social workers and the teachers are just not up for their job right now. Thank you. So, what I, I can think of, to facilitate the equation, um, better integration, and maybe one of the pillars, or part of the pillar, Potential strategy of channel protection could be the beginning of this solution. I think we have another experience to share, and, uh, and afterwards we will uh, we will turn and have the beginning uh, of our participants. Please, I think you, the lady, do we have? Sorry. Would you like to share something? Uh, you know, well, uh, I don't know if we like it, but uh, we rather help my children about our financial views. And um, what I noticed is that the reports that we receive from children are not only from vulnerable children. Like, they're coming from all parts of society, actually. So um, this is based on our practice. Like, I, I don't know, maybe they are vulnerable in a specific way, but what I see is that they're just coming from all parts of society. So um, and what we also notice is that they become younger and younger and younger. So we receive reports from like eight year olds and nine year olds. And some other thing I'd like to mention is that on the reports that we receive, uh, most problems we see is problems that children do to each other. It's not the big old rumor or pedophile, it's the children that do harm to each other. So that's the biggest risk that we see, and I think it's really bad for education. It's not that it's just the normal children that and I think it brings us to the to the point of um, that we need to discuss for a solution now. And I turn to Susie from Internet Voice Foundation. I know you work uh, on um, on the options to take down child abuse images as better photographic content to make the bigger language. Um, how do you proceed? And uh, what do you do to stop the content to be elsewhere? Thank you. 
So uh, I would like now to to launch this video message from Adrian, and I hope because he was quite cooperative at the end, you will see. Uh, I hope it will launch a discussion for us. Thank you. Nice to be a part of this very important discussion on what I feel is uh, very strongly about um, the important agenda of child online protection and protecting the more vulnerable members of our society in the cyber world. My name is Adrian Hall and my company Extensia supports the sustainable growth of telecoms and ICT in Africa predominantly and we do this through the development and the delivery of very high level business summits which bring together members of the public and private sectors and the third sectors. So we have ministers, we have regulators, we have service providers, technology providers and NGOs uh, represented at our summits and as I said the summits focus on supporting the sustainable development of telecoms and ICT in Africa. What we've seen over the last couple of years is a growing recognition of the need that while it is important to drive the sustainable growth of the industry it is incumbent upon us as the people who can make those developments in the industry to make sure that while the internet develops and the access to the opportunities that it presents become more widely available through better connectivity, through more devices and through uh, better education, we have to make sure that the internet is a safe place where we would be happy for our children to go and explore and, and really take full advantage of the many opportunities that the internet can bring in terms of yeah. social development, in terms of social cohesion, in terms of engagement and in terms of education. We can't watch over the shoulders of all of uh, our children while they're using the uh, internet on a regular basis. The access in Africa um, quite substantially through mobile devices. It, it's not necessarily in a computer in a classroom. And this makes it more difficult to monitor. You just asked me to contribute to the discussions today and to put a perspective on whether or not from my very unique perspective, I am seeing a growth in the uh, collaboration, shall we say, between the public and private sectors. Um, is there a crossover, is there a, a recognition, at least at, at this stage, that there is an issue here that needs to be addressed? And is there a will for the people who have, let's be honest, different objectives. Um, is there a will for them to come together with a shared objective of making the internet a safer place? And the answer to me uh, is, is very clearly yes. I see a lot of collaboration. I see that uh, there's also a recognition, and, and this is important, I think, that whether you are developing policies or whether you are uh, looking to, to generate business as a, as a private entity, the protection of the vulnerable members of our society is equally important. Let me tell you why. If you're a service provider, yes, you are going to have to invest in technologies which will support your um, your, your, your ability to, to provide that protection online. But if you do that, then when a parent is pushed by their children, or when a school is looking at which service yeah. provider they can use, yeah. well, you choose the one that can provide your children with a safe environment. So doesn't that then make 
She's service provider. The service provider of choice and doesn't that create a differentiator that's required so that you're not necessarily uh, fighting the battle for supremacy in terms of costs and trying to offer the lowest rate to your users, but you also are fighting that battle on the basis that you are the same service provider. So as a parent and you're looking for the service provider that's going to be thinking in terms of protecting your children. That's the service provider you're going to choose. So it's imperative from a service provider perspective, not just to think of this as a good thing to do. Think of it as good business sense as well. And I'm pleased to say that in my experience, although this message does need portraying what service providers in the private sector do look at child online protection as an important issue. They look at it as an important issue from the perspective of perhaps they themselves are parents. But when they start to look at it as a commercial benefit as well, let's not knock them for that. They're a business. They have to make money. They have to report to shareholders. Let's give them a reason to be able to put that message across and to justify that investment in protecting that environment. This is a, I've raised this as a specific um, point of view because I hope it will create discussion amongst the group uh, as I can't be there with you in Bali. And uh, I'll be open to continuing the discussion and communicating with you further. I have another event coming up in uh, Mauritius in December. It's the Youth Engagement Summit, looking at engaging youth in ICT. And there will be a strong focus on uh, child online protection as being a key element of that. So I hope you can join us there. If you want to know more information, please ask Julia. I'm sure she can advise you and put you in touch with me if you'd like to continue these discussions. Thank you again, Julia, for inviting me to participate, and I hope my contribution uh, stirs a little bit of um, debate and discussion for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. So we would like to thank Adrian for, for this message, and I think a uh, um, little bit provocative message at the end, maybe not, I would like to have your opinion. Uh, thank you for you to be patient. I know it's always difficult to, to follow the media messages. Do we have the representatives of the of the private sector here who would like to hear your opinion on this? Do we have comments? Or was it just here? You know we have different members though. We will come to you in a minute. Mm. I would like to follow up on this comment uh, from a perspective of a service provider that's acting like a parent. Uh, and a very good example for this, just a few weeks ago, I was participating in a debate in the Netherlands, our discussion uh, on the Ministry of Justice and Security, and there were uh, a panel with only youth inside, and um, in the room were about 60 people from um, the government, from the police, etc. And um, the discussion came to uh, GTA 5, uh, very uh, from their perspective, aggressive and dangerous game, um, which comes uh, uh, to uh, vulnerable children as well as they get exposed to crime and uh, sexual uh, abuse as well in, in the game as well, and murder. Um, and actually, we as teenagers don't really mind about it. And we buy games for young children when they are at the store because they're too young to buy games, actually. The, the funny thing what was happening is when the discussion started and we set this, uh, our opinion about it, almost the whole room, uh, all, all of my parents immediately started a uh, discussion between, um, between the people in the room and actually sharing experience about educating their children to become more uh, active and, uh, and to participate in the discussion with their own children about the game, it's a good game for you to play. Or, uh, activity online as well, 
And this is what I want to uh, emphasize that um, yes, do act as parents and, and do uh, stimulate parents to start this discussion with their children. And um, uh, it's the most natural or most uh, uh, tough feeling way for parents to help their children because there's also, and you, you really must understand that this different perception of, of, uh, of risk and vulnerability between youngsters and parents is a generation gap between them. So you should talk about it with youngsters as well. It's not just a top-down view of protecting them, it's also teaching them and understanding children of what they think is risky on the internet. Thank you so much. What you, um, I think what, what you say is maybe we do need to engage with you and to have their voice, and I think it's one of the, the points of the uh, IQ framework uh, that we would like uh, to present in a couple of minutes. And uh, we also have the representatives of you from South Korea here, and I'm pretty sure they, they just agree with you. Oh, we're from Hong Kong. Thank you. Sorry, I was thinking it. We're, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of, um, you know, like the long term point on the industry. What, what, what industry are you talking about? Could it take down, I think, definitely not um, some of the adverts, maybe more on the platform and probably get registered to play a part in the job? We should discount the cost of other things that industry, so if we can drive the like Microsoft through to a full tree company, so we'll work very closely with the ISP.
Sure. Thank you for having us here today. And I think I don't know if you guys want to Adrian commenting on this video message that the industry has a role to play here and it's not just Microsoft, it's Microsoft and Google and Yahoo. We've got and even some of the other players as well. And we see that our responsibility to be in this space. We want this internet to be a place where you and your kids and uh, if anybody wants to come and have a, a safe experience uh, online that's good for all of us. And um, we, we very much see technology as playing a huge role in um, in this and in a company like Microsoft we offer family safety settings and our consumer products, but um, we can have a fun that that. Um, but guidance and education and that's the role that I play with Microsoft in making sure that we're providing our customers and our consumers with tips around online safety because it very much starts at that high level um, piece when you were talking about educating parents but, but teachers and um, advocates and um, law enforcement and, and the way that can, they can talk to and connect with kids that's going to resonate with them because when we go in and just talk to kids and have a lecture and they, they pretty much tune us out. So I like the notion of kids mentoring kids and bringing them into the equation. Um, so that's kind of third piece and third area where we start focused in the partnerships and Susie mentioned that we're involved with the Internet Watch Foundation, but we partner with a number of organizations. Uh, I've worked on the ITUCP framework. We work with the law enforcement all over the world, and uh, we can't do this alone. It's very much the, the message, but we do have a role to play. A couple of things that where we have invested in, in helping uh, child child exploitation, um, we created something called uh, Photo DNA. And this is something that we make available for free to all law enforcement and Google and Facebook also have licensed this technology as a way to uh, create a database of the worst of the worst images to make sure that we are removing those and taking them down and so they don't escalate across the internet. The other piece that we um, have invested in is trying to figure out with researchers and academics how technology is being used to perpetrate these crimes and how can technology be used to support these crimes. So we've got six different uh, academic researchers working on this issue and they will report back to us in the spring of next year and we'll have to make some progress there. But uh, we, like you know, the panel, we do see that that's a role of responsibility for not only Microsoft, but the many in the industry to help keep the internet free and better for all of our users. Uh, and what's your comment for me? Do you truly believe in what this you actually quoted uh, Adrian uh, a little bit and I wrote down his quote because it triggered me. Internet is a safe place where our children can be happy. Do I believe it's a safe place? I don't believe that it is. Well, do you believe that there is a risk to be society in general? So it is the internet, you know, should the internet be a safe place, completely 100 percent where all children can be happy all the time? Do you think that's realistic? I don't think that's realistic. I think there are bad things that happen online and in the offline world. I think there are risks in general in all of society and to portray it otherwise would be um, it would be wrong to think that we could tell our kids you're going to be absolutely safe in whatever environment. But no, but I think the point is we need to educate our kids, let them know about those risks, and hope that they are resilient and if they encounter something bad, they know what to do to, to mitigate that risk. So then we have to embrace the fact that the internet is not a safe place for 100%, and that is something we just need to embrace. And every time I see people get into really like an uptight reaction, we need to create a safe place. Well, I mean, there is not no such thing as a completely safe place. So we need to like, I agree with you, focus on the uh, on the empowerment uh, when it comes to that. And if I can reach that to um, uh, the lady in the middle, I'm sorry I don't have your name here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Susie. Um, you were talking about self-generated images. Uh, looking at the Dutch context, um, actually for the last 15 years, um, bullying was the number one issue for kids. Now, last year, they ch that changed. Uh, after research, they found out that actually grooming is, and then everything uh, you know, connected to that, is uh, the biggest 
issue might forgive themselves. So not for parents, but give themselves that, well, this is the first time actually bullying is not my top uh, irritation on the internet, but actually grooming is the top um, irritation. And a lot of it obviously has to do with self-generated pictures and stuff like that. And again, there is no such thing as safe place. So how are we going to address this? You know, not with a Snapchat technical solution, because that don't work. So we need to, again, empower, train, educate. And I cannot say it enough. There's no such thing as a safe place, so we need to address that. I would also add there's no such thing as a one size fits all approach to be kind of like Larry Magnet. So it has to be culturally relevant and appropriate. So what might work here in Boston may not work in Holland and in the Middle East, you know, in the middle of I completely agree with like you said, there's, there's, it doesn't do us any good to say that you're never going to be harmed online. That's not going to, that's not true. But what can we do to address and, and arm kids and anybody who's online uh, to, to know what to do, the action to take? So, so I always find myself addressing that then, because I mean, you have some like filters and parenting, uh, you know, tools, uh, but that's that's not yet empowering, right? Uh, so that's trying to create a safe place in a sense, but it's, it's one, it's one tool. It's one tool that we give to parents who want to have some protection, especially for the younger kids, and making sure they don't access certain technology. So how does Microsoft does the empowering? Do you care about the empowering? Do you put something in there, or is it? You know, what's well, absolutely. I mean, again, that goes back to my role, and, and I'm about to point to my colleague down here who was just recently named our chief online safety officer for the company, and I'll let her weigh in. But we absolutely, I mean, education is, is the primary thing that we do, and we feel that that is our role, and well, along with a lot of other industries, and making sure that people, parents, teachers, and advocates, and law enforcement are very aware of what's going on and how to address it in a culturally relevant way, appropriate way. Thank you. I think we should do just train who you work with a number of organizations and you have another partnership with the NGOs and the foundations that work together. And you actually support uh, awareness raising activities and the empowerment. Uh, I would like to thank you for um, bringing the question today. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues we wanted to discuss actually is the liability or the uh, self uh, regulated rate funded by minors. Uh, because most of the top issue we see in France, for example, is uh, something that is created by minors themselves. Uh, is uh, the involvement in illegal activities, even if they don't know that it's called a like, illegal activity by minors themselves, and I think we should address the issue as well. Um, and I understood what uh, he was trying to say as well. It's the private sector, the role of the private sector is very important. But we do have risks and uh, challenges for children and teens and, and young people in the real world as well as the online world. We just need uh, to develop an approach. And what I hear is mainly we do need a, um, a kind of strategy, a kind of framework of but regional because we need to take into account uh, once again. Oh no, we um, don't have any working uh, further. No, interesting. Sorry. And um, we have a uh, report uh, participant, Amelie uh, Goa from Ipa. We are um, using a uh, circle uh, one. No, we don't have any. We have a Sorry. very short video message, one minute and a half. And we have a question because in fact, we have a report on the framework on the channel and protection uh, and which uh, have a number of pillars and we will ask Rita not to worry uh, to introduce these pillars uh, to us. Uh, but first of all, I would like to have this message from, uh, from Amelia and we could discuss the issue. Impact also works together with 
Oh, and this is a very unique element of a global cybersecurity agenda. We have worked and continue to work together with the ITU to help countries develop framework, strategy framework on shadow bank protection. Is this a future? Yes. What oh. we mean with operationalizing shadow bank protection is that we are able to provide tangible experiences for stakeholders and therefore create an environment for capacity to be built to empower only professionals working with children, but youth and children themselves to be able to protect themselves online. And uh, with the access to internet being slowly but surely becoming ubiquitous and basically becoming more than a necessity and tending towards the right, that means society, community, country are interconnected and this becomes a fundamental aspect, an element to helping us realize that child protection needs to be taken hold of rather than grassroots for people to be able to create awareness, share experiences, develop practical tools and generally contribute to the global initiative at large. This, uh, work to create framework, strategy frameworks and shadow line protection is not only for developing countries. This is simply because one fight does not be all. Thank you. Hi. I think what we can go up with this uh, message and I hope that you are going to go to the program and the technical perspective that we face uh, here. Um, do we have a, we're going to have one, uh, uh, one comment and afterwards we would like to take a number of questions coming from remote participants um, because we would like to, to include them as much as possible in our discussion. So, very quickly, uh, I want to go back to the issue of uh, we would input the output.
Uh, we also have a global support of protection. One of the only two contracts on that protection. We have a for uh, not only our 193 members, but uh, all stakeholders who come in business ideas, bring uh, strong policy issues, technical issues, mass security issues, too, that you might want to share with uh, others. So, uh, we, of course, uh, look forward to working with uh, all of you and we encourage you to uh, join this initiative. Um, I think we have, uh, thank you for sharing the, the experience and uh, the light to use of child protection. Uh, I think we have a number of uh, comments. Um, I would suggest um, what we see for the feedback to the panel of uh, unique comments and questions. Um, and we see today, and we'll try to discuss actually, that we do have a number of approaches and initiatives that the was mentioned before. Um, that was the problem. Um, but how are new challenges appear? And so my question would be, so how to have up-to-date solutions? And at the point, as a matter of conclusion, I would like to come with the last questions to all the participants and afterwards to have a concluding comments and suggestions from our, from our participants as well as the participants. So can we talk about um, an effective response in the field of channel protection uh, taking a number of aspects, not only the child induced images, but other pornographic content uh, in different countries, and particularly in the developing world, without a strategy of channel protection? Uh, you can just answer us or count with the short answer, one phrase. The question is, can we uh, have an effective response um, and uh, approach in the field of channel protection without a, a regional, without a strategy in the field of channel protection? So, practically, do we need a strategy of channel protection? Every, every country has a yeah, strategy. at national or regional level or specific for the developing countries. So I, 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 I follow the work with the IT is doing this space and I think they're very looking at the use of this opinion and it's very uh, informative for those countries who yeah, are behind that. Um, you know, coming from the U.S., we don't have a national strategy, but I think, you know, as you said earlier very well, that it's something that we all have to do with industry or government or law enforcement and we all have a role to play here and I think each country has a student in a way that makes sense to them. Like much more answer. Thank you. Yeah, more I could say, I mean, in my opinion, obviously, it's a trying to go in the sense of the previous owner of the line, but I think it's very easy to ask the team, for example, that you want my team to be a Uh, 
with uh, by the team of and uh, um, setting together. But we have to start because we have another workshop that will take place in this room. I would like to thank uh, our participants for being with us today. Uh, thank you for the audience. Thank you for your great comments. I think it was the dialogue today. Uh, thank you for our remote participants and the remote moderator and the students having the power for being with us. Thank you and let's work together on uh, having an effect.